Sendero. Nina, wake up. Miguel was shaking her awake in the middle of the night. It was two months after the soldiers killed Poppy. Miguel was squatting on the floor of the hut. In the moonlight, she could see his camouflage fatigue pants and tattered Inca Cola t-shirt. He had discarded his beloved Peru football jersey shortly after Poppy's death, about the time he started meeting with a man the village didn't talk about, high up on the terraces. The man gave Miguel a little red book that took the smile from his youthful face and made him say things like, Soccer is a capitalist diversion, Nina, and we must cut the head off the snake. Mama was asleep in the other room in the trance that had taken her since the soldiers had killed Poppy. An alpaca skin and entrails were drying on a wooden rack by the dead fire. Cooking pots and firewood were stacked neatly by the wall. Miguel, Nina whispered, what is it? But she already knew. Outside the hut in the shadows, shining path cadres waited silently for her brother. Nina had been dreading this day ever since the Sinchis had stripped Miguel naked and beaten him in front of her and Mama a few days after they took Malki away. They wanted a confession that Poppy had been a terrorist, but Miguel had not uttered a word. If Nina had once feared that Miguel would run off to Cusco to chase money and girls, the new Miguel only made her wish she had. She looked at the stranger squatting beside her bed in the moonlight. A faint glow seemed to emanate from his eyes. The Senderistas have come for you, Miguel, she said. Yes, Nina, he said quietly. It's my turn. Did you take the oath? Yes. So her brother was no longer a brother, but a senderista, a member of the Shining Path, one who had agreed to his own death once he had killed his quota of soldiers and capitalists. Death could come by suicide attack, in battle, it didn't matter. She started to cry. Nina, he whispered gruffly in a voice that seemed to struggle with the old, playful Miguel. Uncle Oscar will send for the two of you, but in truth, you know it is you who must look after Mama. But Miguel, what about you? I don't walk this path alone. Nina gulped back salty tears. Tell Mama I ran away to Cusco, Miguel said. Mama knows you would never run away and leave us. In her heart, Nina wanted to believe it. When Uncle Oscar sends for the two of you, you must convince Mama to leave. This village will not be safe. There's going to be a great reckoning. One of the men outside the hut leaned in. Comrade Samson, he said quietly. It's time to leave this life behind. They had already assigned him his new name. Miguel, Nina said, does it do any good for me to plead? Miguel put his rough fingers over her lips. It's done. After that, Mama and Nina moved, not to Lima, as Uncle Oscar urged, but higher into the Andes, away from the Red Zone, back to the Puna, where Mama came from. Lima was a sewer for the Spaniards, Mama said. Nina had just turned 13. Shining Path guerrillas were killing more soldiers, and she wondered how many Miguel had killed. Whenever she learned of a soldier being killed inside, she was secretly pleased. She knew that was wrong because the guerrillas did many wicked things as well. But she couldn't help wondering if Miguel had found the soldier who shot Poppy and sliced the bottoms of his feet open before forcing him to take the walk of death. Nina had seen bodies floating down the river. One day she saw a soldier, bloated and black, and she thought, did my brother kill him? How bitter she felt at times. Eventually it became an overall feeling of what was happening to her people. Before they left Juanin, the soldiers came and a sergeant questioned Nina. Had the Tarucos been here? No. Was she sure? Yes. Where was her papa? She didn't know the soldiers would not let them have his body. He was probably in the country somewhere, wherever the soldiers took them. The sergeant said she was very bold. Where was her brother? He ran away to Cusco. Your brother is a coward, the sergeant said, and touched Nina's hair. I'm 13, she said, and moved away. And if my brother were here now, you would not do that. He nodded and asked Nina to comb her hair for him then. She said no. He asked again, saying he didn't want to hurt her, only watch her brush her hair. So she brushed her long black hair while he watched, and she thought, Miguel will kill you too. Thank you.